And we are now recording. So what questions do you guys have for me? It's uh, you, it's your AMA, ask me anything. So the test is going to be 10 questions. 10 questions, just like last mm -hmm. time. Uh, let's see. It's 7.3 through 8.6. That's correct. Okay. Plus one of the hard problems that you missed on the last test. Okay. So make sure you study your last test because I have a lot of choices on that one. <laughs> Is it still going to be that we get five percent extra credit if we do it within the hour right yeah so if you take it between noon and 1 p.m you get the five percent extra credit and uh, it will be open from 8 a.m to midnight so please i don't remember who it was but i think it was somebody in this class that ended up trying to submit it after midnight they were only lucky that i happened to be up because otherwise I wouldn't have seen that until morning. And so I opened it up an extra 15 minutes. But please don't start this later than 10 p.m. So, so that, um, I, I will also say I've disabled printing on this test. So don't even try to print it because anybody who did, I didn't realize if you try to print it, Proctorio kicks you out of the test. And so I don't want, I don't want you to get kicked out of the test. So just make sure you've got your, you're all ready paper ready and then um oh i will tell you this actually um so i checked with the math department and they are going to allow a formula sheet on the finals and since the formula sheet is basically for this this is the formula sheet that they're going to have on the final exam and so come on Scroll down. Okay, so this is your arithmetic sequence. This is your uh, geometric sequence. This is your sum of an arithmetic sequence. This is your sum of a geometric sequence. This is your sum of a an infinite sequence where r is less than one. Um, they've got the factorial formula there, and then this is the binomial distribution formula as well. So, um, so because I mean, all of these formulas are basically from what basically what we're going to have for the test. So I'm going to give you this formula sheet, um, basically just as it is. I, I might rearrange it so it's in two or three columns, but, um, but anyway, so you will have these formulas for this test and for the final exam. Um, so you don't necessarily need to memorize them, but you need, you need to recognize them and know if it's a, a arithmetic sequence or a geometric sequence or whatever. So, so you will have that. Um, what other questions do you guys have? Okay, let me ask you guys a question. Who has done the uh, review? Oh, I was just watching the Rich Eisen show, by the way. That was where I saw that. Um, here, I'll give you these. This is my stats class, but it's basically the same. They have a formula sheet. Um, so you can ignore step two because they have way more formulas than you have to remember. But uh, yeah, so exam will be open from eight to midnight. Don't print the exam. Otherwise, Proctorio will kick you out. Show your work submitted as well as your ID. Submitted, ours is gonna be written five upload. Um, please upload it within 15 minutes and 5% for people who take it on time. So that's their class time, but not yours, but. Um, Okay, let's go to your class. All 
oh, that's not your class. <laughs> I'm like, what is that? That's my trick class. Um, here it is. So who's done the review? Anybody? I haven't started it yet, but that's what I'm going to do right after this. Because they actually, in my other class, they had started looking at it. And I the funny thing was, because I didn't post it till like 10 o'clock last night, but um, there were uh, some good problems at the end, especially with sequences. It seems like that's where people uh, have troubles. Um, those were good, but there were some better ones. I have a question on number 45. 45? Yes. Okay, that's a good one. Okay, so tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy and paste this so that I can... Uh... So you said 45. In fact, maybe I'll pull 45 and 46. Those both look good. Um, okay, so 45, determine whether, so let's go with 45. Determine whether, it, so we know it's an infinite geometric series, whether it converges or diverges. So how do you know if it converges or diverges, first of all? If R is greater or less than one. Okay, so if R is less than one versus R is greater than one, I'll say greater than or equal to one. If R is less than one, then what? It converges. Converges. And if it's greater than or equal to one? Um, it diverges. Okay. All right, so what is R in this case, in question number 45? Was it one half? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Ooh, <laughs> one half, okay. So if it's one half, therefore it... It's gonna converge. Converge, so we can eliminate dr off right off the bat. So now we have to figure out what it converges to. How do we figure out what it converges to? Um, we're going to do s of n equals a over 1 minus r. So yes, so S sub N equals A over one minus R. So that was the correct formula to use, okay? Now, like I said, you don't necessarily need to memorize those, but you need to recognize them, okay? So we need to figure out what A is. So what is A for number 12, for number is 45? It, is it gonna be 12? It's gonna be 12. And we're gonna do one minus one, one. half, right? Oh, geez. <laughs> That was weird, I didn't expect that. One minus, I better put that in quotes. One minus one half, which is one half, right? Mm -hmm. So 12 divided by a half is? Um, 24. 24, so that's answer C, okay? Does that make sense, Andrew? You were the one that asked this, right? Yeah. Okay. So, since you know that, can you do um, number 46? Is the R4? It says it's a geometric series, but I don't think it's geometric. Or if it is, I don't understand what it is. Because you've got four in between here, and then you got two and two, right? Yeah. But at any rate, whatever you're doing, you're adding bigger numbers, right? 
Yes. So is this going to converge? No. No. So it's got to be D. Well, the way it converges is if the numbers keep getting smaller. And those are not getting smaller. They're getting bigger. Okay. So That's 46 diverges. Okay. All right. What else do we have? What other questions? I guess I can go back to this. I had a few questions on the first page with all the hyperbolas. Okay. Which one? Um, on number six, I didn't understand how you would find the Y vertices to like make your box and then draw the asymptotes. Okay, so um, here I'm going to copy and paste this here. Whoops. Okay, so number six. I'm not going to worry about the answers. I'm just going to pull out the questions here. Okay, so if you this one. Find the equation with a center at 2, 1. You know what I think I'm going to do? I never thought about this, but I think this is a great idea. I'm going to try to make this look like a grid. I think that's going to be a great idea. Why didn't I think of this center? And we're going to draw. Are you not going to let me draw lines? Okay, well, hopefully this will be a straight enough line. Um, actually, let's try that again with my finger. Oh, that's horrible. I can't draw a straight line. That's terrible. We're going to pretend that's a grid. There's got to be a way. Let me see something. Um, that's a little straighter. OK, so we're going to pretend that's a graph. So my center is at 2, 1. So 1, 2, 1. So there's my center right there. OK. And I've got a focus at negative 5, 1. So 1, 2. Sorry. I have to decide where my 0 is. OK. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So negative 5, positive 1. So I've got a little bit of a focus there. And I have a vertex at 1, 1. So that's my vertex. We can't even see that. OK. And it's a hyperbola. So can we tell what A, B, and C equal at this point? A equals B equals C equals. What do you guys think? I, I wasn't really sure, like, yeah, even where to start with it. OK. All right, well, let me, let me try to do it. So we know it's a hyperbola, right? So I don't know where the asymptotes are, but I'm going to, ooh, that didn't work. Uh, I need my drawing tools. I know that if this is the center and this is the vertex, Doggone it. Let me tie. I don't care. I just want black. Black's fine. That I'm going to have some sort of a hyperbola that's going to be oriented east and west. <laughs> okay. So remember, is this going to be an x squared first or a y squared first? x squared? It's going to be an x squared. Is that? It's going to be some sort of an x squared minus. Uh, Y squared, right? Is it x squared? What? Yeah, explain why it's x squared again. Sorry, yeah. How do you know that's first? Because it's it's parallel to the x-axis. We've got our vertex. Our vertex is at 1, 1, right? And we have our center is at 2, 1. So uh, the center is going to be... So this is kind of your major axis here. Uh, 
then take another color like red. This is going to be your major axis at one. Does that make sense? How did okay. you know that? Because because of where my center is and where my vertex is. Okay, my center is at two one. It's at this point right here. I'll try to draw it in red a little bit, and then I've got a vertex at. Wait a second. Did I put the? Yeah, positive two up one. My vertex is a positive one up one. So I didn't draw that very well, but the vertex should be right where that little red dot circle is that I just drew. That's where the vertex is. Okay. So the distance here between the focus and the vertex is going to be my distance A, which in this case is going to be one. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does. Okay. And so because I know that, then I know if I go back to my drawing tools, then I'm going to have another vertex right here. Oh my gosh, red, just fix fine. I don't care. Don't make me do this. All. And so I'm going to have another hyperbola that's going to be out something like this. Okay. Now I don't know how wide it is. I have a feeling it's going to be a lot wider because so I've got my two vertices. So I've got one vertex is at one one and the other vertex um, is going to be at three one. Because it's going to be one unit from the center. So both my verte vertices are one unit from the center. Does that make sense? OK. All right, so now, so I know that this is going to be a one squared on the bottom. I can also put in here, because we're off center, where uh, my center is going to be x minus 2 quantity squared. And my y is going to be y minus 1. Minus 1 quantity squared. Okay. And you get that from the center points. From the center point. Yeah, that's the center center right here. Okay. All right. So now um, now I need to figure out what my B squared is. I do know what my C is, though. And I can, once I know C, I can figure out what B is. And, of course, this is going to equal 1. Okay. And, of course, this is underlined like it's a fraction. Okay, so what is C? Uh, negative five. Nope. Isn't it just five? Nope. You guys are major measuring it from the origin. You should be measuring it from the center. So it's the distance, if I go back to my drawing tools, let's pick yellow here. It's the distance between here. Is it seven? It's seven. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, get rid of that, seven. Okay, so my C is seven, my A is one. How do I find my B? Wait, is it one squared plus b equals seven squared, or you don't square them? I'm not sure what you're referring to. Are we following the equation of a squared plus b squared equals c squared? Okay, that's what I was looking for. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay. So this a, we know that a is one, so a squared is going to be one plus b squared. We don't know. Is A squared one because of the vertex or the center? Yes, <laughs> because of both. Okay. Be because the because this vertex that they gave us, the one one, is mm -hmm. one unit from the center. Oh, I the X direction, yeah. And there, therefore, the other vertex is one unit from the center. And so, what do I put for C squared here? Seven. 7 squared. 7 squared. So it's 1 squared plus b squared equals 7 squared. Correct. Okay. Okay. 
So if I subtract one from both sides, okay. 49 minus one is 48, right? 48 equals B squared. Yeah. So um, um, to be honest, that's all I need because I just need B squared. I don't necessarily need B. So mm -hmm. this is going to be over 48. And it goes under the X. Say it again. Is that going to go under the X minus two squared? Is what going to go under the X minus two squared? Oh, wait, never mind. Sorry. Yeah, so that's over here. Okay. So it said find the equation. That's the equation right there. X squared minus, excuse me, X minus two squared over one minus Y minus one squared over 48 equals one. Okay. Okay. Now, another good question that I could ask is to finish graphing it. We've we've kind of graphed it, but what what have we left out? The y vertices. Yeah, which yeah, technically we don't call them vertices, but I know what you mean. Okay. So how so we need the y vertices um, or the or you could also think of that as the minor axis that goes in um, goes up and down how many the square root of forty eight yeah which is really close to the square root of forty nine which is about seven so we need to go up and down seven in this case so if I go back to my drawing tools here. Uh, let's pick this blue one, I guess. Okay, so if I count up from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm gonna draw a thing there, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna go down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so that's where that is. And so now I can draw a really skinny box here. And so really, um, so if I'm drawing my asymptotes, I mean to do that, whatever. Oh. Um, now, so my, my parabola here, can I erase that? My parabola really should be much wider than I, oh, come on. Should be much wider than I drew it. Oh my gosh, just pick a color, I don't care. It should be much wider, more out like this. So how did you know, like if we weren't given the, did you determine that the major axis was the X axis because of the focus? If we hadn't been given the focus, would you not know? It was a combination of the focus and the vertex. But wouldn't... The like focus if, is, the focus, the focus is always on the on the transverse axis. Yeah, and I understand that. But if we hadn't been given the focus, because like there's vertices for the x and the y, so I guess that's why I'm a little confused on how you determine. Well, and so when we're talking about hyperbolas, we would not refer to that as a vertex. There's only there's only two vertices. You've got both of those, but this is not a vertex. Oh, it, so it's. You, you can think of it as a vertex in the ellipse kind of a way, but it's not really a vertex. Okay. Um, and so, yeah. So your, um, your focus and your vertex are both part of the transverse axis. To be honest, uh, if you weren't given the focus, you couldn't finish this problem. You, you wouldn't have enough information. So why are there focuses for both the X and the Y in an ellipse, but not in a hyperbola? Just because the circle connects? They're different shapes. Okay. So, and, and yeah, so if, if we're talking about an ellipse, let me go over here. An ellipse, remember, well, here, I'll draw it up here, so it's not necessarily in the center, okay? So think of it as you, you've got two nails here, so that you've got two foci, and if you had a piece of string and then you, you would took your pen, you would draw the ellipse around 
with that string. That, that's the shape that you would have. So yes, you can think of these. I think in the book, they only call those, they only care about those two vertices, but you really need to know how up, how high and low you're, you're going to go as well. Um, typically in the book, they only count the major axis vertices. They don't count the minors, but I, I told you guys I wanted the minors in there too. Because you, you need to do, you need to know those in order to draw it, okay? So, um, but we we don't call this a vertex. It's it's not because you've you've only got these these two things are your vert vertices, and um, these up up and down those will help you draw the box, but the box is just for the asymptotes. It's not actually part of the curve, so. So you wouldn't refer to that as a vertex. It's just to help you draw the box for the okay. asymptotes. Yeah, I understand. Thank you. Okay. All right, good questions. What else do you guys have? I have one that I think will stump you guys. We um, very briefly glossed over on the, in fact, I do, I think I just wanted to cover this one. Uh, we very briefly glossed over some properties of sequences. And I want to say it was 32 or 31 or something like that. Oh, 34. That's what that's one was. I want to go over problem 34. And actually 33 is not bad either. Um, let me, I want to do these because I think these, if I put something on here like this, oh, that's not what I wanted I think most of you would struggle with these. Okay. So I'm just going to copy both of those over here. Okay. So 34 is the one I really want to focus on. Okay. Now there are some properties of, um, and maybe I'll just draw it right on here. Okay. There are some properties that were at the end of 8.1 which very briefly talked about, and then I don't, I don't know that I gave you a whole lot of problems on there, but here's the point. If you were to list out all, so we want to know the sum from one to 47 of this sequence, six n minus one. If you listed out all 47 terms, you will run out of time on the test, guaranteed. You can, you cannot do this one without, um, without using the formulas. Okay. Now, the thing that I want to point out here is that what you can do is you can split up. I need my pen. Okay. So you can you can kind of distribute this. So you can do the sum from one to forty-seven. Forty-seven of six n minus the sum of one to forty-seven of the number. Or actually, let me write it this way plus the sum of negative one. Okay, now I want you to think about this for a minute. What, let's just talk about, come on. Let's just talk about this piece here, okay? If you added the number negative one 47 times, oh my gosh, that's driving me crazy. Uh, if you added the, one, the number negative one 47 times, what value would you get? Exactly. Negative. I got to go back to my drawing tools. Negative. Negative. Come on. Negative 47. Okay. So that sum is really easy to find. Now, with this six, one of the things you can do is you can actually pull that out front. So you can rewrite this as six times the sum from one to 47 of n. Okay. Now, do you know any formulas, ignoring the six for a minute, do you know any formulas to find the sum of the first 47 digits? Is this when you add like one and 47, and then you times 48 times 47, or? Yeah, you're really close. Okay. What's the formula? Uh, and I'll, I'll go back to my 
typing. What's the formula that you need to know for that? I'll give you the formula sheet. Which formula is, is the one that I want to use? One, two, three, four, five, six, or seven. Is it the two, the second one? Or no. Okay, now remember, this is the formula sheet they're going to give you. So quick review here really quick. This is an arithmetic sequence. This is a, a geometric sequence. This is the sum of an arithmetic sequence. This is the sum of a geometric sequence. This is also a sum of a geometric sequence, but this is what, the one you're going to use when r is less than 1 and it's infinite. This is your factorial um, formula, and then this is your formula for your binomial distribution. Okay? So the formula that you're going to want to use is this one here, which is kind of what Joey said, but then he picked the wrong one. How would you, how'd you pick the wrong equation if you told me this one? <laughs> I don't know. No. All right. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can copy that. I don't know if I can. We're going to try to copy that. I didn't copy. Oh, it did. Sweet. Okay. So uh, what's N in the case of the red box here? Is it 47? It is 47. So we're going to take 47, we're going to divide by 2. Okay. What's a sub 1? Is it 1? It is 1. And what's a sub n? Forty-seven. It is 47, okay. So one plus 47 is 48. 48 divided by two is 24. So essentially this turns into 24 times 47, which equals 24 times 47. So the sum of the box basically is going to equal 1128. So you're gonna take six times 1128, and then you're gonna subtract the 47 that we got over there, okay? So if I type this in, equals 6 times 1128 minus 47, the sum of problem 34 is 6721. Wait, why is it 1 plus 27 equals 27, like 24 times 47 and not 24 times 48? Because remember, there's a fraction here. Mm -hmm. So so I took 48 divided by 2, which is 24. Oh, OK. Yeah. So I mean, better better stated, showing all the stuff, this is 47 times 48 divided by 2. OK. So like I said, if this is the type of problem you're going to see on the test, you're going to need to know the tricks because if you, you know, you can say, oh, I'm going to just find the first 47 terms, you'll run out of time. Okay. So now, here, let me do this. Let's see if do problem 33. How would you find the sum of problem 33? We do. And what's the formula to find out that? I don't remember. Here, here, I wonder if I can put these side by side. There we go. So now, except for now, that's blocking. OK, 
Okay, so those are your formulas that you're going to have tomorrow. Whoops. I wonder if I can do this. Okay. The fifth one down, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so th this is the sum of a geometric series. Is this geometric? What is it? Oh, it's, oh, it's adding six. Oh. Yeah, it's adding six, so it's arithmetic, right? Okay, so since it's ar arithmetic, we can get rid of everything down here. So it's going to be one. Actually, we can get rid of the second one. Again. So one and three are the only two arithmetic equations we have, right? And to be honest, we're going to need both of them for this problem. Now, here's how I would have started it. You, you could start it in your way, Joey. Um, but I would have said, oh, the sum I want the sum, right? That's going to be n over 2, and I don't know what n over is, n is yet, n over 2, uh, times a sub 1. What's a sub 1? Six. Six. Plus a sub n. What's a sub n? 32. Okay. So now I just need to figure out what n is. So let me uh, right justify that and then we'll underline it. Okay. So, um, okay, so now I need to find a, and so now I'm going to use the first formula a sub n equals a sub 1, which is 6 plus n minus 1 times D. And what was D again? Six. It's six. We're adding six every time. So if I simplify this, this whole thing equals 432. So this becomes six plus six N minus six equals 432. Of course, the six X, the sixes, the six are going to cancel and I'm going to be left with six N equals 432, divide both sides by 6. Why are you equaling it to 432? Because the, that's the last term in the sequence. Okay. So if I divide, by, divide both sides by 6, then I'm going to get 432 divided by 6, which equals 72. So in this case, n equals 72, which I can now plug back into this first formula. So I'm going to have 72 divided by 2 times, um, in this case, 438. Oh, because I put it, I thought it was negative. Anyway, times 438. So 438 times 72 divided by 2 is 15,768. The answer to number 33. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. We've got a couple of minutes left. What other corp questions do you guys have?
no other questions. All right, well, if you've got no other questions, then I think I will let you guys go. And um, so study hard, do well. Um, test is tomorrow. Oh, I will post. I'll try to post that right now. I forgot to do that. Um, the review for the final exam that's put out by the department. So what I would recommend after you take your test uh, tomorrow, spend the weekend going over the uh, UVU review. Um, they've got a lot of problems on there. It looks pretty good to me. Supposedly to have medium, intermediate, and hard problems. Um, and uh, so you can do that over the weekend. On Monday, we will go over your test first and then um, go ahead and just ask me any questions you have on the UVU review and we'll go from there. Thank you. Yep. See y'all on Monday and do well on the test. I left my phone number if you have any problems. Hopefully it ran pretty smooth last time, but we'll, hopefully we'll keep it that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank have you. Have a good one. Yep. We'll see you.